I am here today uh, with Sharon, um, and let me see if I can get this acronym right. So you are from VBDS. Before we get into anything else, what does VBDS stand for? It stands for Veg Box Donation Scheme. Right. So uh, you are Sharon. What is it you do with the VBDS, and what was your role? Um, I'm the coordinator of this of it. I, I founded it originally, and um, have been running it ever since. And um, so we now have we you know a registered charity with trustees, but I still manage it, it's the actual day to day running of it. Yeah. Fantastic. And we'll come to your accent in a minute, which is clearly okay. you're not UK no. uh, accent. We'll come on to that. But what okay. what do you do? What's what's the VBDS about? What is it you're doing through that? So we we basically are kind of a food bank, but we don't do the normal um, food bank deliveries of sort of dry food, you know, pestas and rice and tinned foods. So we're almost like a, an addition to a food bank delivery where we just do fresh fruit and veg boxes. And, um, and it could include eggs and some flowers and that sort of thing as well. But we almost kind of uh, like, an, like a symbiotic relationship with the food banks where we, we they're providing the dry food and we work with them to provide a healthy, fresh veg box for people. Fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah, much needed. We actually did use food bank quite a few years ago. We were unemployed. Uh, yeah. We couldn't get a job. We had rent to pay. We had children, yeah. no food in the cupboard. So we went to food bank. And yeah, it was the one thing that I thought I just, I missed some fresh fruit. They had some, yeah. I think a few apples on the table, which we could take, but yeah, yeah the, the, the fresh fruit and vegetables, it can make such a difference, can't it? Mm, it can. It's so essential for health. I mean, the, the, the other food is is equally essential to stay alive. You know, you, you <laughs> we can't provide enough food and veg and fruit to keep people alive, but it certainly adds that healthy aspect to it, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is what we would. Yeah, mm. which is what our experience of food bank was it four or five years ago mm. is it you know it's tin goods it's not going to be the healthiest but you know what you don't mm. really care when you've got no food mm. and mm. your kids are hungry you Literally. just want to feed them mm. Um, mm. so that's amazing so how did you what's the story I mean it, what you're doing is amazing but how how what what's the how of what you do okay so we've always my husband and I are both passionate gardeners mainly vegetable gardening organic vegetable gardening and now no dig these days. And um, we just always found that we had so much extra left over and everybody else we knew at the allotment, we have an allotment and people growing stuff always have a lot extra. And we thought, well, how, do, how can we give it to people? But how do you know who's in need? We just wouldn't know how to know. And um, I was still working at the time, so we didn't really have time. But once I retired, I just felt this was something that just kept coming back to me. And so we started originally just at the allotment giving extras from our allotment and other people on the allotments. This is in Potton in Bedfordshire. Other people donating extra that they had. And we just delivered in Potton to oh, three or four households in the beginning, just veg boxes like that. And and that's how it grew. But the, the, the passion all along was because I'd also helped at the food bank, a local food bank, and realized, as you did, that it's mostly dry and tinned goods, which is essential, but, you know, not not necessarily the most healthy. And we just felt that we wanted to provide that healthy aspect to it um so that was really important to me because the health is important yeah so that's what we do <laughs> cool so you yeah. operate sort of as a, a supplementary to the food banks would that be a, a very badly worded version of what you do yes yeah we do we do are referred to people as it's, it's grown now quite a lot so we're doing a lot more boxes than we used to in, in a wider area but still within sort of six miles of cotton so biggles road and sandy um but we um Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> no, I'm just wondering. Uh, I was trying to get in my own, if my in my own words and head, what is it you do? Sorry. Um, so you you're working not so much alongside, yes, but you're, so you're supplementing. Yeah. yeah. So so we have food banks that refer to us as well, and it's a particularly the Biggles Wade Food Bank. Um, but we also have, now have a much wider network of referrals from uh, social services and um, different charities and schools and so on. So it has broadened. It's not just with the, the food banks anymore. But um, that is an essential part of it as well. We're always available to do that. We always want to help the food banks with the, the healthy side. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, it's a great passion to to try and do that. Mm. Having been on yeah. the other side, as I say, uh, quite a few years ago, mm. it it was it was the one thing we had some apples. They were a bit, you know, not very great, but they were mm. really really welcome because when you got nothing, mm. something yeah. is amazing. Um, mm. Yeah. So uh, so you're growing fruit and veg. I mean, when, when you say you're growing vegetables, what what sort of veg are you are you doing there that you're then able to pass along? Oh gosh, we grow everything, <laughs> everything we can, everything that grows here we grow. So we because we have an allotment, but we also involved with the local um, community uh, vegetable garden in Potton as well. 
and the, the they call the pot and food garden and they also donate um veg the veg and, um, that we grow there and a little bit of fruit that we grow there um a lot of it is donated to the veg box as well which they also feel gives more purpose to them as a community garden as well so you know so it, it's you know but we, we honestly we grow everything that anybody grows on the allotment you know, potatoes cabbages and just a small amount comes from us you know um, but a lot of what we get also comes in donations from supermarkets and other vegetable businesses. So that's also a large part of what we get through Fair Share and Neighbourly mainly, um, who organise this. So we get donations, we collect all through the week, volunteers go and collect donations of fruit and veg that are brought back to go into the veg boxes. So it's no longer just from the allotments or just from what we grow. It's it's much wider than that now. That's amazing. That's a lot. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, have, you, have you found that you, your initial passion, I'll, I want to give, uh, I've got an, a surplus of veg, so I'll, I'll give mm. that away. Then a few more people got involved and that grew and grew. Have you found that your approach to your own allotment has changed because of your end use? Um, well, we do also use a lot of it for ourselves because we do believe in healthy eating, you know, yeah. and we also feel that the, the, the more healthily something's grown and the better the soil quality is, the better the, you know, the, the, the nutrients that we get from it. Um, so, no, I don't think so. I think the, the main aim is not just for us to grow it anymore. Um, it's it's to source from a much wider area because we could never grow enough. And that's not our remit really here. You know, the growing is what we do. And that, and out of that came the need to, the, the desire to provide a healthy diet for people who are in need, people in financial and food poverty. Um, but the main thing is not for us to grow it. It's it's to distribute it. That's what's important. Yeah. Which is the point. It's, it's that end use, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, what, it's what is the purpose of the food? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you, you've got a charity. How many people are there um, behind the scenes? You say you've got people picking up stuff and distributing. What's yeah. what's the size of the team you've built to now? Probably uh, 10 to 12 volunteers at the moment Yeah, who help in various things. As you say, some collect food and some help to sort the food because a lot of what we collect has to be um, cleaned up sometimes <laughs> and um, some people help pack and others help deliver and some do all you know it just depends what people want to be involved in so and then of course we have trustees as well who are also volunteers so they, and, and their help is also invaluable one of them is our treasurer and one is it does the digital stuff and so it's yeah yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying. I was trying to think ahead around how how this works. But have ha, do you offer help to people who want to get involved with you? Say, well, I've got an allotment. I've got uh, you know a big garden. I want to grow veg. Um, is there help for them, or is it you're you're more just a we collect it and we distribute it? Yeah, it's mainly do we just collect and distribute it? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So if somebody wants to start growing veg, what what would you say to them? How, where do you begin? Where do you begin? I think they should look at no dig. Is what it's, what it's called. It's 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 all about soil health, and it's so important to to compost your ground and not to dig it up, um, and to to preserve all the micro micro microbes under the soil and the worms and the fungi and everything else that, that's there. You know that helps to to produce the healthy food that we eat. And so I think the first thing to to um, to do. Uh, Charles Dowding is my hero with this, but <laughs> I think just to go online and just look for no dig. Um, which is very important yeah and organic of course because we don't spray we don't fertilize which means we have lots of bugs and it's a continual battle but you know that's that's the way we do it and we feel it's healthy at the end of the day yeah yeah we had an apple tree a few houses ago and uh one of the kids says, oh, was that organic then we had those apples i said well it's just an apple tree we do nothing to it so yeah, yeah i guess it technically mm, yeah. it was because we've not done yeah. anything yeah i suppose legally it's not organic but it's organically grown i think <laughs> I had a friend who's a, a beekeeper and he said oh, organic honey is just it's rubbish. He said, I'm a beekeeper. My bee I can't control where the bees go. You, yes. You can't say they're going to stick to organic yes. flowers because mm. they're bees, you know. So yes, yes. he was just saying, oh, it's a it's a bit of a thing. It's there's no such thing as organic honey. Unless you can control the environment yeah. with a bee, you can't. Mm. Um but obviously mm. you're planting, you can. Um right. So I can hear an accent in there that doesn't sound to me like English. So what's your story? Um what what brought you over here? <laughs> So we came to um, the UK in 2001. My husband's grandfather was British, so we were able to come over on what they call an ancestral visa. Um, and uh, he'd always wanted, he traveled and stayed here for some time and he was younger and always wanted to come back. So so we moved here 20 years ago and it's been it's been great for us. We, I mean, we still miss home. It's home is home always. You know, when it comes to the rugby, we know we support. <laughs> um, but uh, 
but England has been great. It's been wonderful for us. You know, we've done well and we've really benefited a lot. And yeah, it's nice to be able to give back as well, which is great. So what part of um I mean I I say South Africa because it's a it's a mm. big continent, but uh, whereabouts whereabouts in that oh, yeah. huge so, amount of land were you? <laughs> yeah, so we're in South Africa, which is the very bottommost country, and we came from Port Elizabeth originally, which is on the east coast, southeast coast. Okay, yeah. I sort of mm. I don't know what we I well, I know the name. That's about the, the limit of mine. Yeah, the limit, yes. And then we ended up in Potton, which is in the middle of the country. We missed the <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we knew someone. Yeah. I suppose the only thing about the UK is you're never too far from the sea. It's no, not, that's true. It's yeah. not, you know, a thousand miles across. I've got a friend mm. who was flying across um, to see their children in America, and it's, you know, it's like 700 miles. Mm. And it's just, I'm, it's just that that's just a couple of states. And you're thinking, that's that's England. That's like the UK, Scotland to England. It's just, it's it different is. scales, isn't it? But we're not too far from the sea, which yeah. isn't so bad. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, so, right. So uh, you're, you're, you've are you got your vegetables and you're, you're giving them away. Um, you say that you're... In my my wording would be you're sort of supplementing what's going on with the food banks. Um, mm. Can people reach out to you directly, or do they need to go to social services or uh, the local food bank or what have you? Um, so yes, um, we have a. If they go onto our website, there's a page that says how to get our veg boxes, but they do have to go through a referral system. So they, it would tell them how to do it and what if they went to one of the. Um, the agencies that don't already to refer to us, they can direct them to the page where they can find a copy of our referral form. And we just do it because obviously our, our, we, what we have is limited, the time and the resources are limited. And we also need to know that the people have been um, means tested and, and are really in need, which we can't do ourselves. That's not something we try and get into. So we trust the, the people who are referring um, to us that these people are genuinely in need. And they can come from any any background or any anybody anybody you know can can apply. We had a lot of um, carers who who are you know um, referred to us by a charity that works with them, who can't perhaps be in employment because they're full time caring you know, or people who for whatever reason you know, newly divorced, single moms, refugees, homeless, you name it. They 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 all anybody and everybody is welcome. Yeah. Um, so you, you talked about this passion that you, you have a passion for growing yeah. and you felt this sort of need to to help others I mean, you had surplus of vegetables and that that idea and oh. i i love hearing the stories of how well we've got a bit spare what do we do with it and then how yeah. how that idea grows into something which is more than which is more than you know any one person could be yeah. um how many people do you know that are being fed now through the scheme that that's been established through you so last week, I think we've, we we're not we're not huge because we are in a small in a rural area, though the sure. towns around us are growing. But we fed about eighty people last week. So we do every Friday. We go out, we we pack the boxes and take them out, and so it was probably thirty households, eighty people in total. Yeah. But that's eighty people, thirty households. Yeah. Who so wouldn't have had it otherwise? Wouldn't have had it otherwise. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You can sometimes look at the sea of 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 need and and poverty and all that, mm. but. Actually, we can all do something, and if we all did that something, actually, yeah. a lot of people would be helped. Mm. Um, and you're doing that way well, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Can I just say too that we are we are a faith based charity, though you know there's no requirement of that for our volunteers or the people who receive. But you know, the, it, it comes from our faith originally in wanting to help the poor, as Jesus told us to do, and also from the verses in I think it's Deuteronomy and um, Leviticus, Leviticus, actually twenty three. It talks about gleaning. It was an, a, you know, a concept in ancient Israel where if the people were, were, if you were harvesting your field, they were told to leave the edges and not, to not go over it a second time, so that the poor and the foreigners, those in need and those who were foreigners, um, could go and and pick up what was left. And that was a way of providing for the people who were poor. And so we can't do that, you know. We can't go out and say to people, go out to the fields and collect. But this is this is what we feel we're doing. We're gleaning. We're taking stuff that's not needed. Um, and distributing it to the people who do need it. And another thing we're doing too is helping with food waste because of course, if what, what we take from the supermarkets is food that would have been thrown away, that's still perfectly good to eat. And so, you know, that that side of of, um, of helping with food waste problem is also great. And everything that's left over from ours when we clean it up goes to the compost heap to grow more stuff. So that's also another circular system there. That's fabulous. Yeah. I yeah. was going to ask what was driving behind all of this because it's great mm. you're doing these good yes. things. But mm -hmm. um, I, I was going to say, what what is what is that passion? But you're saying about gleaning, which is something I, I do understand a little bit of. Mm. Um, yeah. 
and it's such a it's such a great way actually of talking about what you're doing is that yeah, mm. you can't say we're well, going to the supermarkets and have the stuff on the floor that, that that's not that's not the right way of going about this yeah. but actually we all have some surplus somehow somewhere yes. yeah sure. and we can pass that on and we can share it so mm. um yeah. that's your passion mm. art mm. i mean you're saying that anybody can can approach you that's fine and that I, you mm. know great i sort of mm. expect that that's as it should be but yeah. um the story that came to my mind was when you think about um boaz and ruth because ruth was a widow mm. um who was in poverty yes, uh, right. had a mother-in-law to care for and mm. she was there gleaning and then boaz mm. the guy who owned the field then comes along and says well forget the gleaning don't just ignore whole patches and let her have even more and it's yes. it's that it's mm. that bountiful goodness isn't it and when you think about yes. the earth with the goodness of what we can create Mm. that's what i see in what you're doing um yes. as yeah. an organization which is really mm. which is really wonderful thank you <laughs> appreciate this yeah. yeah that's fine um so how do people find out about what you do what can what can someone do to support you who's local and what can someone do to support you who loves what you do but isn't local enough to give you vegetables or, or pick up things for you okay so obviously we're always looking for volunteers. We love to have new people volunteer. And, and I think it's wonderful because volunteers are not only giving and helping, you know, they, they invite their community, but they're also joining um, a kind of a social group. You know, we, we, we have tea and coffee in the middle of the packing and get get together. And we have other times when we get together as well, you know, social events. So it's great. It's a, it's a nice way for people to get involved in their community as well. Hmm. And um for people wider, obviously we have on our website we have a donations page. We we um we we do have to buy some stuff to top up the veg boxes. And as you know, veg and fruit is the prices have gone through the roof at the moment. So um so we do welcome donations. We do get quite a number of donations from local businesses and other people in the town, particularly at Christmas time, and everyone wants to give, which is great. Um so we we're really happy to have donations um for people who are you know who want to support us who perhaps are not local. And people also, to, if they want to do, you know, buy root fruit and veg and donate and bring it to us, um, would be lovely. We get donations from the Potton Community Orchard, for instance. They give us a lot of apples in the summer or other other growers or other orchards, you know, donate stuff. So it's, yeah, it all helps and it all adds up and it all helps us to fill those boxes, which is what's important. Yeah. That's really good. Um, the question I was going to ask you, do you know of any other, I suppose, supplementary uh, food bank schemes to, 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 that's bad phrasing but is, do you know any of any others that are doing something mm. similar to you I, I believe there is another one in our area and i'm sure there are others but i don't know about them personally um someone just mentioned they thought there was and there's somebody else doing a similar thing but i think it, it, it's fairly unique i think at the moment you know there are not many um there are not many charities that are doing this exclusively yeah so if somebody wanted to set some up uh, would they be able to approach you and say Yes. Could you point us? What did you do? Mm. What What are all the the potholes that we want to avoid that you've been through and bounced out of? Yeah. I mean, we'd be very happy to have other. You know, we would like to actually expand and have other veg box schemes in different areas that we could. You know, that that would actually link to us. And then obviously we have you know the whole um, setup and all the the you know the documents and the flyers and everything has already been done. So yes, of course we would love to for it to expand and to grow. So people would just be welcome to contact us any time and we can do that fabulous um and i'm guessing it's gonna be a busier time for you you've already said people are more uh more inclined mm. to give when it comes towards mm. christmas so yeah. um, i guess you are going to be busier in the next few few weeks i guess yes we are yeah we, we're looking we every year we do a christmas what we do it's something a bit different we do a christmas day meal box um on, just before christmas and then we don't just do veg and fruit we we buy we get a you know a roast of some kind everything that they would need for breakfast and dinner, the ingredients for breakfast and dinner um, for Christmas Day. So specifically for people who are not with family or not, you know, don't have anywhere to go or to be with or, you know, or can't afford to to have a Christmas. So, And then if, um, we get donations of um, presents, which we got last year from a company um, close by. And I think Little is giving us presents this year as well for the children. So we include presents and Christmas crackers and so on. So we have this this whole meal and um a lot of people like to come and just do that they love to get involved with just helping to pack and distribute the, the christmas day boxes you know so yeah so we will be busy so we're busy now looking for donations particularly um and um especially meat donations because that's the expensive part of the box so sort of your pigs and blankets and you know um stuffing and gravies and um what else and the roast itself 
Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's been a joy to talk to you to find out about what you're doing. We look at the need around us and think, what can we do? Actually, mm. you, you're, you're doing it and you're doing something so, yeah. in mm. a sense, so simple. Yeah. It's just giving people fruit and veg, you know, and, mm. and things that they need. Mm. Um, and I love that. I love the fact that you, you you see that in terms of, it's been the hands and feet of Jesus, literally, isn't it? Mm. Um, yes. And Jesus would go out and meet a need. Mm. that's what you're doing so uh, mm. that's that's really great uh, can you give us your website so that people who want to find out more or donate or get involved or whatever mm. can get in touch with you in touch. so it's www.vbds which stands for veg box donation scheme right so dot v- www.vbds.org.uk and cool. we'd love to hear from you <laughs> great and we'll yeah. put that on the video in the the podcast yeah. as well so people can can find out about you mm. sharon and um, thank you for your time i'm it's, it's really um I, I i'm so honored to meet so many people doing interviews who are doing so such a wide array of things and every so often something comes along i just think wow that's really cool that's a really yeah. good idea and this is one of those for me so it's been a <laughs> it's you. been a delight and a pleasure to spend some time with you today um, thank you talking about this so i hope you ha- get all that you need as we go into christmas mm. um thank you for what you're doing on behalf of somebody who's been the other side Mm-hmm. it's invaluable so uh yeah thank you for your time today have a great rest of your day thank you for having me thank you Bye okay for now.